Agent Marshall Marty, Cyan. Today we're going to be taking a look at another Windows 10 virus. This virus we're going to call Cortana. Because, boy, Cortana sure is looking like a virus to me. Because I keep on installing her and she keeps coming back and back again. Kind of like a stalker, looking for more data consumption and telemetry usage. And I, I kind of don't like that. So, let's just take a look. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the task manager. So it's just all the way at the bottom of this scrolly list, eh? And underneath Windows System, we should see Task Manager. And to the common user, it doesn't look like Cortana's really up too much. I mean, it doesn't even look like Cortana's even there. But, uh -huh, oh, more details. We click that, and, oh, there we go. There's some Cortana action going on there. And we can see that Cortana's taking up 50 megabytes of my RAM usage, which is 15 times more than the actual screen magnifiers I've got going on here and the task manager itself. So I'm, okay, I'm not gonna complain about that. I mean, it's understandable. Cortana's gotta do its little thing and you know, can't go hungry. It's gotta use some resources. Easy enough, right click and task. And then, boom, it's gone. We're good, not for long. Cortana comes right back. So then we're thinking, oh, it's probably, it's probably meant to be running all the time. So maybe we should just re end, go to the open file location. Aha. <laughs> so here we go. Here's a nest egg of Cortana's. So you can see I've got them nicely labeled and everything. Here's Cortana 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and I'm following through all the way to 0 0.8 and down to the Cortana I'm currently using. And if we take a little closer look, we realize that one of these folders is actually a hidden folder. Why it's hidden, we don't really know, making me very suspicious, I mean not just very, but very, very suspicious of what exactly Cortana's hiding from me. So this is the source of the problem. This is where the Cortana's live in. So if we boot Cortana out, we're going to boot everything with Cortana out, right? So we can't just delete it for some reason. You hit that delete button, and of course it's going to say, give that classic, the classical folder access denied. And then you hit continue, of course, to get your administrative permissions. But you don't need administrative permissions. You need permission from the trusted installer. We can see where this leads. It's kind of one of those rabbit holes that goes nowhere. Well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. If it can't find the folder, then it probably can't use the folder. So let's try renaming it. So we're gonna right click, and then you should see a rename. We're gonna click that. And now, oh, we can actually can rename this. So I'm gonna name this here. I'm just gonna add it to the rest of the family here, keeping up with the tradition of 0 0.9. And then I'm just gonna hit enter. And the screen's blacking out saying, are you really sure you want to do that? And I'm saying, yeah, of course I do. This folder is being used currently by Cortana. So, what we do is, is very quickly, of course, we end Cortana and quickly try again. And boom, Cortana's done. But is Cortana really done? So now I'm going to restart my computer to make sure that Cortana's good and gone. So, uh, I'll be back in a second. See you on the other side. Okay, so we're back after the restart. So now let's see if Cortana's going. I've got the Task Manager bookmark right here. And note, we see that Cortana is not going at all, so that's all good. But this is where the plot gets thick, as they say. So we take a look at our start menu, which now is not a start menu. It's a grayed out start menu, which is a big, big difference. So we, can, we can scroll and do everything we, we try to do. And of course, we can resize it. But we cannot use the start menu. And why this is, is I think it's because we can't find Cortana, so it can't use the start menu because the start menu is, is so integrated into cortana that's forcing you to use it cortana whether you like it or not almost except microsoft didn't take into account one thing and that's that i've bookmarked almost every single thing that i can possibly use onto this little taskbar right here so i'm actually pretty happy without my start menu so what have you doing to fix it to get my start menu back in case i ever wanted it i just open up the powershell as an administrator and then what I do is I type in a command SFC and then forward slash scan now. And what this does is basically scans for any broken or missing packages. So let's take a look first at our internet. So our internet, we, gotta, we wanna remember this, is turned off. So I've turned off the Wi-Fi, no connections whatsoever to the internet. So now if you enter and run the command to try and repair our now officially brand spanking new broken start menu. All right, so the command finished out and it says that the Windows Resource Production found corrupt files and successfully repaired them. Details are included in the CBS log, WinDirectory logs, cbs.log. 
for example, right here. So we're gonna we're gonna take a look at this log file. We're gonna see exactly what it pulled up. So we're gonna go into this PC. And we're just gonna paste that there. So here's the log. It starts by saying it's initializing the trusted installer, and it's doing a ton of other stuff. Oh wow, this log file is actually pretty long. Let's see. What was that? What was that? Repairing a corrupted file, Cortana. So this is repairing Cortana. So that tells us that you cannot use your start menu without Cortana. Now let's take a, let's just take a look at the script start menu. So we've got our start menu. Yep, it's back. Everything working again. And let's take a look at the a minute. Let's take a look at the test manager again. And there's Cortana again. So that tells us that we need to have Cortana 100% of the time if we want to use the start menu. So now, for additional bonus points, we're going to re-enable all the Cortanas at the same time. So we're going to right-click on Cortana, and then we're going to go Open File Location, and rename it. So, right-click, rename, and let's paste that name back in, and hit Enter. And the screen's blacking out, because it always does when it asks me for administrative privileges. I'm just going to click Yes. Alright, the destination already contains a folder named Microsoft Cortana, blah blah blah. If any of these files have the same names, you'll be asked if you want to replace those files. Do you want to merge this file with this one? Yeah, well, we're going to do that. Uh, okay, and Microsoft says, no, you're not going to do that. You're going to get permission from the trust installer first. Well, let's get permission from the trust installer and be on our way then. Try again, please. Try again. <laughs> no, it will not work. Well, it's not really working the way we planned. We, I was hoping we could have like seven or eight Cortanas all going on at the same time. So now let's, let's get rid of them. Let's, yeah, continue. You need permission from the trusted installer, but so you can rename the folders. You can delete them. You can edit some components of it, but not all of it. Do you guys remember Clippy, the little paperclip guy that pop up and say, hey, he looks like you're doing something. You need some help? I don't remember that guy being even half as annoying as this guy. Or this girl, or, or, or I'm not really sure what Cortana is. Uh, do you guys know of a solution to be able to uninstall Cortana yet be able to still use your start menu for Windows 10? If you guys know any of that, I'd love to see that down in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and thank you for subscribing. It certainly does help us and we sure do appreciate it. So I'll be seeing you next video. Agent Marty out.